Church. My name is Lisa. And I'm Andrew. We're so glad you were here with us this morning. In just a few minutes, we will sing together, and then our pastor will come and give us today's message. All together, we will be here for just over an hour. But before we get started, we want to take a few minutes and tell you about some next steps and events happening right here at Oasis Church. For anyone that is visiting us for the first time, your next step is to fill out a Connect card. We would love to know that you're here and be able to connect with you about everything going on here at Oasis. You can also use the Connect cards for prayer requests. We would love to pray over you and with you about anything going on in your life. We also have a gift for you today. So bring your Connect card out to the lobby after service and stop by the Connecting Point desk so we can meet you and give you your gift. If you are interested in being a part of this church family, your next step is to attend the Belong class on April 29th. This is a 90-minute class where you will learn all about the history, vision, and beliefs of Oasis and become a part of our church family. Please come and join us. Lunch and childcare will be provided. Thanks so much for being with us today. We believe the church isn't just a place to come to, but it is a family where you belong. Make sure to connect with us at theoasiscc.com and on social media so you can stay up to date with everything going on around here. We hope you have a great day. Well, welcome to Oasis Church. Glad to see you here. Let's go ahead and stand together as we worship our God and our King. Here we go. together Jesus Jesus you're the only reason that I'm even seeing Father, you are holy, my feet in. 
Amen. Well, Jesus is not only the lamb that was slain for us on the cross, but he is the lion of Judah, and he is fighting on our side each and every day. So let's just set our eyes to Jesus. Here we go. morning. God, we thank you that you are the lion and the lamb, that you are fighting for us each and every day. And God, we give you the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. You can go ahead and have a seat this morning. And just like we do every week here at Oasis Church, we're going to take communion together. 
Uh, and we do this uh, because of what the Bible says. Uh, you know, before the night before Jesus was going to be betrayed and ultimately go to the cross, uh, he gathered his disciples in this upper room. And we know this moment as the Last Supper. And Jesus took some bread and he broke it. And he gave thanks and, and he handed it out to the disciples and said, this is my body, which will be broken for you. And then he took uh, the cup he said, this is my blood, which will be poured out for you uh, for the forgiveness of your sins. And we do that here at Oasis Church. We take the bread and we take a cup of juice. And it simply just represents what Jesus did for us on the cross, that his body uh, was broken for us. And his blood was poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. And one thing that we have to realize uh, with that is that we are all in need of a Savior. You see, death uh, was a punishment that we deserve because of our sin, because of the sin uh, that we just have in, in, this, in this life. But God decided to make a way through Jesus to reconcile that sin, that we can freely come before the King of kings and the Lord of lords through Jesus' blood. Because it's, it's through Jesus' blood that makes you holy, that makes you righteous, that makes you a son or daughter of God. This morning, he has such a great love for you. A love that, that took Jesus to the cross, that he decided to leave his throne in heaven, to come down to this earth and to die for us. That he took our sin, our shame, and he died for that. So this morning, you know, no matter your previous history, no matter your background, Jesus is saying this morning that he loves you, that he wants what is good for you. Because you see, we serve a good, good father. The Bible says that all good things come from the Lord. And so this morning, uh, as the elements are passed out, uh, we're going to continue to sing. And you can feel free to take uh, that piece of bread and that cup of juice whenever you're ready. Uh, but let's examine our hearts this morning. Uh, let's thank God uh, that he decided uh, to give us the hope and salvation that we have through Jesus. So let's pray together before we take that. God, we thank you for your amazing love, for your your grace and your mercy. God, we know that no matter how many times we may fail, that you will never fail us, that you are faithful. God, and we just pray that we can glorify you and honor you the best that we can. And here this morning, we look to you, Jesus, as the author and creator of our faith, of our salvation. And we thank you for the cross and, and everything that that means for us. And we thank you, Jesus. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
just bow our heads and just in the quietness of your own heart this morning just give him thanks for being so good for what Jesus did for us for what God continues to do in us and through us each and every day yes we thank you for your love for your grace and your mercy God God we know that we fall short of your glory. But it's because of what Jesus did that we can be holy, that we can be made righteous, that we can have eternal life in you. And we thank you for the hope that only you can give because you are such a good God. And we thank you because we know we are loved by you, the creator of all things. You're good. Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am. It's Come on, let's just declare that this morning. You're good, good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, you are so good. thank you for your goodness, for your greatness, for your mercy. Uh, 
it's in you we put our hope and our trust in Jesus' name. Amen. I think we underestimate the importance of baptism. For me personally, I just never... I, did, I understood it was not optional, but it was just something I just never did. Morning, church. Woo, hot mic. Great to see everybody today. Hey, welcome. Those of you who are your first time here, those of you who've been here for years, just want to say I'm glad you're here, and it's been a great season here at the Oasis, seeing what God is doing in people's lives. And uh, if you're newer with us and you've never filled out a Connect card, they're located in the, the seat right in front of you. If you would grab one of those and uh, Fill that out. If you've got a prayer request or what have you, too, you can fill that out and drop that in the offering bag at the, at the end of the sermon, uh, at the end of the song service there when we finish up our final song. Um, I want to talk to you before we get to the message today. We're in this fourth sermon of, of Born Identity, um, where we're going to be looking at another subject here today that we're salt and light. Uh, but uh, I don't know, we're, there's three B's I want to talk about right now. One is burritos. I don't know if they're still selling those out there or not, uh, but, or will they be after service? I don't know, but it's for, <laughs> we're going to be doing this for the next several weeks. It's for kids going to camp. So uh, feel free to come hungry and buy one of those things and help a, a kid be able to go to camp. Uh, the second B is baptism, and next Sunday we're going to have the baptistry set up because there are several people who are wanting to take that next step of being baptized into Christ. So uh, if you haven't been baptized and you believe in Jesus, that's your next step. Read about that this week and come prepared. Uh, we'll videotape it and we'll uh, have all the clothes and towels that you need to do that, uh, to be able to do that. Uh, and today is our third B, is Belong class. If you've not attended our, we call it our membership class, uh, uh, you don't, we don't have to, we're not going to chain you here to be a member, but you can come up and find out about the, the vision of the church and how you would fit into God's kingdom here. Uh, it's following the service here. We have child care. We're going to have a light lunch. It lasts about 90 minutes. Uh, if you're not even pre-registered, you know, we're wel you're welcome to do that. We, we'd love for you to, we usually try to do this every other month, I think, right now. And I'd love to, to see you in uh, that class as well. It's, it's a good time. Um, and I also would like to say... Um, uh, one of our church members uh, succumbed to cancer and passed away this past Friday and went to meet the Lord, Brandy. And I want to just let everybody know, our church family, that her funeral will be here at 1.30 on Thursday. Uh, there will be a viewing across the field over here uh, for in the morning, 10 to noon, and then uh, they're going to move everything here. So if you want to uh, celebrate her life here with us on Thursday, uh, it's at 1.30 here at the building. So uh, this is part four of Born Identity. So can I get you all to say influence? Again, Jim, influence. Yeah, I like that. I want to remind you, if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Christ, God has called you to be a change agent, a divine influencer in this world. So if you have your uh, bulletin in there, we've got an outline. And if you're taking notes, I'd like for you to write this down. 
uh, this phrase, I want you to fill in the blank here, that you are the salt and you are the light of the world. And that's huge because you're not just the, the salt of our city or the light of our community. You are the salt of, of the earth and the light of the world. And I, we got to realize this, and that's what this message is about so we can get and understand who, what our naturally born identity is in Jesus Christ. Um, Jesus said this in uh, the book of Matthew. He said, you are the what? Salt of the earth. You're the salt of the earth. And if, if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It, it is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and to be trampled by men. So you are the salt of the earth. And you might say, well, what does that mean? How in the world can I be the salt of, of the earth? In this context, when Jesus was speaking during this era, uh, salt was like the second most valuable commodity. The first was the sun, because of all the richness that we get from the sun, but the second was salt. Uh, and it was so important because salt did so many things. We, we didn't have the modern conveniences that we have today of preservation and everything. Salt was so valuable. People would even in the Roman world get issued salt as pay. You would work and you would be issued salt. That's where we get the phrase, well, he's worth his salt or he's not worth his salt, right? That people got paid in salt. And Jesus said, that's what you are. But it doesn't mean that in a modern context that you're uh, like the salt of the earth, like you're just a, a good old boy or a good old girl. What, Paul, what, what Jesus is really saying is that you're not a good old boy, you're a bad old boy, but you have a good old God who has transformed you from darkness to light to make you salt, to make you the light of the world because God has transformed us. So when we think, when we think about all the ways that salt uh, is used, I mean, what's salt do? One of the ways is it preserves, right? And we're, so we're Christians, so we are to be able to be a divine preserver to communicate to people about eternity and God so their life can be preserved forever and live with God forever. What else does salt do? It purifies, doesn't it? It purifies in a, in a, in a very real sense. You're the salt of the earth, and you bring purification. You're a purification agent of change representing the, the kingdom of God in this world. What else does salt do? It creates thirst. Right? Have you ever been to the, the movie theater and got one of those big things of popcorn, right? Because you can go back and get more when you get a big one. But it's very, 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 very salty at the theater, right? Why? Because it's a valuable uh, commodity for them to be able to have you go back and buy one of those big drinks to go along with the, the salty popcorn, right? So we are to be the salt of the earth. We are to, we, we're transformed by Christ and we are to be an agent of change to create a thirst in people's lives when they see your life and they go, I want, I want to have a life like that. I see the joy that they have. Can I have that? Uh, so it creates thirst. It also melts. Salt melts. I mean, on an icy sidewalk, you put salt down and the, the, the ice melts. And in this world where people's hearts have been hardened or they're cold, They've been hurt by religion. They've strayed from God or something's happened. You, you, can be, you can show the love of God to melt the cold and hard hearts. What else does it do? Salt heals. I mean, if you've ever been to the ocean, you've got a boo-boo, you walk into there, you swim a little bit, it heals fast because it is, it is a healing agent. And so that's what God can do. He can, he can take you and bring healing into people's lives. You're the salt of the earth. So if everybody would say with me, I am the salt of the earth. Amen. Uh, Jesus said we're something else. He said this. He said, you are the what? Light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Now, what's he talking about here in this context? Again, Jesus is speaking. He says, you're to be the light of the world. He said, you don't light a lamp in your home and put a bowl over it and keep the bowl over it. Now, they would do that. It, they didn't have lighters. They didn't have matches. It was hard to light their little lamp. You get it lit, you want it to stay lit. So in the daytime or when the wind's blowing through the window, they'd put a bowl over it. It had a hole in it, and it would stay lit. And then at nighttime, you'd take that off. And he's saying here, at nighttime, you never have the bowl over the lamp. And he's saying, look, you... We've got to let our light shine. Don't ever hide your light. As a Christian, don't cover up 
your light. Let people know that you're reflecting the light of Christ. Jesus said, in the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. So don't cover up the fact that you're a Christian. You're the salt of the earth, the light of the world. And listen, the world is very impure and the world is very dark. And God needs us as agents of change in this world. So everybody say with me, I am the salt of the earth. I am the light of the world. I am a Christ-empowered influencer. And my life will make a difference. It, it will. It, I mean, that's who you are. That's your born identity. Well, I don't feel like it. Well, it, do, it doesn't matter how you feel. This is who you are. Well, no, I need to learn more. I need to study more. I need to be more dedicated. No, if you're a Christian, you are the salt of the earth and the light of the, and the, light of the world. So I want to give you two thoughts that I hope will help be able to, for us to grasp this, to get this into our hearts, to be able to understand what our born identity is in Jesus Christ. Number one, if you're filling in your outline, uh, as the light, you simply need to let your light shine. You just, you just let it shine. As a Christian, you just let it shine. And, and it doesn't have to be forced. You know what I'm saying? Like if you see somebody and you want to let your light shine on them, you don't go, and they go, what are you doing? You're like, I'm trying to shine my light. I'm trying to shine it. And it's like, no, it looks like you need to take a breath. You know, you need some oxygen. And no, we don't ever have to force that. As a Christian, it just comes as a natural overflow. When we know who we are, we'll know exactly what to do. And that's what we're going to look, like, look at in Acts chapter 16. It's, it's a great story where two guys, love this story, where Paul and Silas simply... They were the salt of the earth, they were the light of the world, and they allowed that to be shown in a very dark place, this place called Philippi, and we're going to learn about this. Uh, Paul and Silas had been radically transformed by Jesus, so anywhere they went, they were letting their light shine, they are talking about Jesus wherever they went. The authorities did not like it, so they would arrest them and, and beat them. They would arrest them and beat them because they kept talking. They, they could not stop talking about Jesus and uh, uh, there's an introductory portion to this passage that we're going to read that talks about basically that, that uh, when you're reading through it, it says that Paul and Silas, they were stripped, they were arrested, put in jail, and put into stocks. Now, if, you, if you're like me and you're just studying the Bible, you read through that passage, I just kind of read over that thinking, you know, they just had a really bad day. They got put in jail for the night, right? But looking into it, you can see that they really had a really bad day. Because what did that mean? They were actually, they were, they were stripped, which means they were in a public area. They were stripped, and then they were, they were beaten. They were flogged with, with this apparatus that probably had glass and, and, and rocks tied to the end of it. Probably lashed 39 times, and that thing was designed to rip the flesh off of your back. Then they were thrown into the dungeon, and it says that their, their feet were put in the stocks. Well, what was that like? Well, if you've ever taken the wishbone out, out, of, out of a dead carcass of a chicken or a, or a turkey, and you rip that, right? That's kind of what they did with your legs, and they would put your legs in the stocks, and what that would do, it would increase cramping, and, and it was a form of torture because they wanted it to be painful. What do you think Paul and Silas, they were, all this happened during the day, they were thrown into jail. What do you think they were doing after, at the end of this day? Let's read about it. Verse 25 says, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening. That's amazing. They're, they're in pain. They can't sleep. It's midnight, and they're singing and praising God, and they've got a captive audience as well, right? And I guarantee you, Paul and Silas didn't have this conversation. It's like, oh, we're in prison. We need to be witnesses for the Lord. What could we do to be witnesses for the Lord? Well, let's have a Bible study with them. Well, I can't reach my Bible. My legs are in stocks. Okay, what's the next? Maybe we can quote the verse of the day. John 3, 16. Uh, no, let's not do that. Well, maybe we can sing. I guarantee you they did not have that kind of conversation because they knew who they were, and when you know who you are, you're going to know what to do. And they simply let their light shine. They just let it shine. Do you ever, it's a little bit like, um, last night, I don't know if you saw the moon, but it was bright, 
and we say, boy, that moon was bright, right? But technically, if we want to get technical about it, the moon's not bright, right? But what makes the moon bright? The moon reflects the sun. And in the very same way, that's all we're doing, even if we don't feel bright at times. But we reflect the sun, the S-O-N. As a Christian, we reflect Him. And people who see you should be able to say, there's something different. I see the light in these people. It's reflecting off of these people. And whenever you feel like it's just not enough, think about, I want to be the light of the world. And there's a, a great little song. If you ever think I'm not the light that we need to start singing, maybe you learned it in VBS or as a kid in Sunday school. Do you know what that song might be? Can we sing it today? Let's go. Yeah, if I sang it, you'd say, Greg, your light's dimming. So it's like, this little light of mine, I want to let it shine, right? This little light of mine, I want to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No, no, see, you learned something in VBS back then until they brought you the cookies and you got a sugar buzz, right? But we don't, we don't, we don't hide it under a bushel. And we don't let Satan poof it. I know one virgin's blow, I like poof it out because there seems to be a lot of sin. Don't let Satan poof it out. So there's a couple of reasons why I think Christians don't just naturally let their light shine. One of them is you got a bowl over it. And like Jesus said, you've got to get that bowl off. You've got to get that bowl off, and you've got, to, you've got to shine. The second one is you're letting Satan poof it out. Whatever Satan is doing to poof it out, you don't let him. You, you pray about that. You, get, you, you allow. That's your born identity. You were born to shine in Christ. That's who we are. I mean, it's not, oh, I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sundays. It's, no, I'm a Christian every day. I can't help stop reflecting and talking about him. He is my life, and I'm going to tell people about Jesus. If you know who you are, you're going to know what to do. Let me tell you a story about what happened this past week. I was uh, uh, at the gym. I go to the gym over here, and uh, I, I work out with uh, several of you, in fact, that I get to see at the gym. And, uh, but there's these three young guys that are about 20 years old, and we work out together or near each other and, and talk a lot and I went in the gym the other night and uh, walked in and they were all three kind of huddled up in the, in the locker room and I went in there to change and, and I walked by them and they said Greg I said yeah I said how many girlfriends have you ever had and I'm like too many to count guys you know cause I, didn't, I didn't get married till I was 41 and uh, that started a conversation they started asking me questions about dating and about relationships because they, they both have a couple uh, of them have a new girlfriends so uh, we sat there and talked. Well, they asked me questions. That allowed me to be able to ask a question back. And I'm like, hey, have you ever heard of Samson in the Bible? Because they're all wanting, they're, 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 you know, they're working to get all strong and all. And, uh, and one of them had heard about Samson. And I'm like, let me tell you about Samson. I said, God made Samson strong, and women made Samson weak. And uh, I got to talk about relationships, how they work, how they fail, and all. And I sat there for like 15 or 20 minutes talking about this Bible character, Samson. Why? I was just being salt and light. It was, it was just being salt and light. And uh, we talked, and I, I said, hey, guys, you know, and, and they don't go to church. I actually have them on my prayer list. And uh, they said, when, when are you preaching on Samson? I said, at the end of May. They said, we got to go to that. We'll sit up front and throw stuff at you, they said. <laughs> they said, so I want you guys to be praying for the three guys at the gym that they'll get here and hear the word of the Lord and maybe learn something about relationships and all that. But, but I did not sit there and think, oh, how can I be a good witness in this situation? No, I was just simply being who I, I am. I'm, when you are salt and light, that's who you are. That's who you are. And here's what happened when Paul and Silas, they were simply letting their light shine. The Bible reads this. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake God shows up and decides to kind of show off a little bit right here. It was such an earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At, at once, all the prison doors flew open, and everybody's chains came off. They came loose. <laughs> so God shows up and frees all these prisoners. But look what happens next. The jailer woke up. Mr. Jailer's sleeping on the job, right? So he, he wakes up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew a sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. So what happened here? Uh, he was thinking if any prisoner escapes for any reason, he's going to be publicly executed the next day, so he's like, I might as well get this over with. 
But what was amazing that none of the prisoners that were there with Paul and Silas, none of the others left either because they knew something miraculous was going on right here. And we read that Paul said, Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We're all here. And this, this story is so amazing to me on so many levels. Because if, if God, like, shook the prison and my chains fell off, I'm out of there, right? <laughs> I'm gone. I'm gone. But these guys didn't do it. They're, I mean, it's like they were looking at the jailer guy who they might have wanted harm to be caused uh, on him because he's the bad guy, right? He's, he's the darkness in their world. He's putting them in jail. And, and, and don't we do that as Christians today? I mean, we, we, we look at the darkness and sometimes we want to flee. Instead, instead, we should be there shining into the darkness, right? But we do. We look at the darkness and go, well, I don't want to be there. That dark place, you know, I don't want to hear that secular music. Oh, those people drink alcohol. They wear tattoos. They have spiky hair. And they run, but we should never run. We are the light to shine in the darkness. So we're never supposed to run from the darkness. We're never supposed to run from the impurities from, of the world because we are the salt and we are the light. And that's what Paul and Silas did. They stuck around. And everybody else stuck around too. What did they do essentially for this guy? They, he didn't have to die. They showed love. They showed compassion to this guy. And it's about to change this guy's life. And that's what we should be. It's, you know, we go, I can't be salt and light because I, I don't know the Bible. People are going to ask me questions. Look, people really don't care about all this. But they want to know how much you care. And when you care and show compassion to people, that will open up a door of ministry and conversations that you will be able to reflect the light of Jesus Christ in incredible and amazing ways. And these guys, that's simply all that they did. They were a light shining into the darkness. And when you know who you are, you'll know exactly what you're going to do. I think about uh, when I was at Bible college, uh, when I went to Bible college, I worked my way through Bible college. And, and one of the things that, that I did, I mean, for, for that whole span of time uh, was I became a valet parker. And I went and parked cars in downtown Cincinnati. And uh, downtown Cincinnati, let me tell you, is a dark place. And uh, I got hired by a guy who worked there. He was, uh, and he had been to the Bible college too. Well, I, I ended up being like the, the head valet. So I started hiring all the people from the Bible College. And we, we were working in like in different, three different restaurants at one time. Had a, a huge staff working in there. And, um, uh, and it was, it, we saw crazy stuff. And since, uh, we, crazy stuff. I mean, so a jumper that was coming out of a window. We saw a guy stabbing people. Uh, prostitutes. We saw rioting. I remember uh, a big riot broke out one day. I mean, just dark stuff. So that would be my, my kind of tagline. I said, hey, guys. You want to come and learn how to drive a, a, a five-speed Ferrari? And like, yeah. We taught a lot of guys how to drive five speeds. Uh, do, you, do you want to make some good money? Yeah. Do you want to go out and preach on the streets of Cincinnati? Yeah, man, they were hooked and they were there. Uh, but I think about some of the victories that happened just because uh, of being salt and light. And, and, and I remember uh, one of the uh, ladies at the restaurant, what we would do is, if it was late, kind of dangerous on the streets of Cincinnati, it's dark, you know, if you can imagine. We'd go get people's cars for them because we were kind of familiar with everything. And I remember one lady at the restaurant uh, suffered through some addictions. We told her about Christ. Eventually, she got connected with the church, was baptized into Christ, and started singing in the choir. And I heard that she had, like, the voice of an angel. And, and I think about uh, this Ethiopian that came here through the lottery program, worked in the garage in the booth, and we talked to him about Jesus. He had alcohol issues. He called me one night. He said, Greg, I need, I need the Lord. And I said, Brother, you do need the Lord. And uh, he, he was sauce. So we talked to him over a period of time. I remember uh, one night after we valeted, it was late in the night, went over to his apartment and baptized him in his own bathtub. I mean, it was awesome. And uh, about drowning, but that's another story. And... Uh, and then I think about one of the security guards that, that worked there and uh, kind of manned everything. We talked to him. Joe caught fire for Jesus, and, and we got him connected to a church that lived, that where he lived near and uh, talked to the pastor, and I was able to baptize Joe into Christ. And these people's lives was never changed again. And the thing of it was, we weren't a bunch of pastors. We were just valet parkers, parking cars, just letting our light shine. And, and, and there are those of you who are probably in a very dark place, and you're going, man, I want to get out of there. That place is sick. 
Have you ever thought that that's where God wants you to be? Just to let your light shine, to make an impact where people are watching you, observing you like Paul and Silas going, there's something different about that person. Listen, we are undercover agents for the cause of Jesus Christ, just enacting change in people's lives simply because we are reflecting the sun, the S-O-N. That's who you are. And all you got to do is take the bowl off and let your light shine. That's all you got to do. Number two, if you're taking notes, you need to understand that, that your salt and life, light living, causes change. It changes lives. That's exactly what it does. It's what happened in this story. So Paul and Silas, they're going, hey, nobody's gone. You don't have to kill yourself. Look what happens next. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked them the most amazing question ever, the most complimentary question ever. He asked them, he observed Paul and Silas's life, and he's going, guys, there is something about you that is different. I mean, you are worshiping God when you should not be worshiping God. You're preaching when you've been told not to preach. What is it about you? And he says this, sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to have what you have, in other words? And they replied this, believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord. They spoke, I want you to get that, they spoke the word of the Lord, the gospel message. They shared the gospel message to him and to the others in his house. And it says this, at that hour of the night, we know it was after midnight, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Some of the wounds he probably inflicted. Then it says, immediately, he and his family were baptized. Immediately, they were baptized into Christ. There was something intrinsic about the gospel message where people responded in baptism, where they would die to their old self and raised up a new creation. That is the urgency of baptism. That's why next week that we're going to have the baptistry ready for those of you who need to take that next step. There's a sense of urgency about that. Then it says, the jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them, and he was filled with joy. Don't you love that? He was filled with joy because he'd come to believe in God. He and his whole family. He and his he was filled with joy. He had the light of life. He went from darkness to light. He now had what Paul and Silas had. The Bible says if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Call on him and you will be a masterpiece created in Christ Jesus to do good works which he had prepared in advance for you to do. And when you call on him, you can become an overcomer by the blood of the lamb and by the words of your testimony. And when you call on him, you can become an ambassador, the highest ranking official sent from heaven to earth to shine in the darkness of where God has planted you. And this is a deal. When you know him, you'll know exactly what to do. Not just I go to church, but I am salt and I am light. I am salt and I am light. And it just happens. It happens just like that with Paul and Silas. Several months back now, we had some repairs uh, done on our home, and the sales representative uh, that belonged to the company, he was in our home several times. And, uh, and let me tell you a little bit about him. He, uh, in college, he's several years out of college now, but in college he played football. But due to an injury, he couldn't play football anymore. And this guy's like... This guy's big. It's big, hulking of a uh, man. And and uh, one of our uh, last conversations about uh, what we got done to our house, he called up and we talked about some stuff. Got stuff finalized. He said, "Can I ask you a personal question?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I had no idea where the conversation was going." He said, "Can I ask you a personal question?" I said, "Sure, you know, uh, shoot." And uh, he said, "I want what you have." I'm like, "What?" He said, I, "You're a pastor." Uh, been on your website, um, seen how you r- reacted through all this and interchanged with your family. He said, I want you what you have. And I'm sitting there thinking, man, I'd like to have four more inches and have what you have. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, uh, and we talked, and, and, uh, and it was simply just because of salt and light. And, and I told him, I said, you know what? You can have what I have, and it's all about Jesus Christ. And he went back and, and, and found uh, a guy that he went to high school with who was an on-fire Christian. Uh, we, we all talked on the phone. We talked about Jesus. And uh, now his life will forever be changed 
because he just poured out his heart because things were going kind of crazy in his life. And he lives up in the Springs, but he's found a church there. And just because of salt and light, his life will be changed. And it's a great compliment. I mean, I, I don't have every day somebody going, oh, I want to be like you. I don't want to be like that guy, you know, usually. But that's who you are. And when you know who you are, you'll know exactly what to do. And, and oftentimes, I think salt and light is really effective and seen over time. I mean, I think back to at my childhood. I mean, this started in grade school. My next door neighbor, she and I were best friends, went to school together. You get up to high school, my best friend in high school, he and I were, were like brothers. Well, those two met and eventually got married. And, uh, and this was then along a little bit later when I uh, became a Christian at age 20. We were still friends. We were close. We saw each other all the time. And I'm like wanting to share the gospel with them. I'm saying, it's about Jesus. You've seen how Jesus has changed my life. And I remember them saying, that's good for you, but it's just not, it's not for us. And I'm like, if, if you ever want to talk about spiritual things, call me up. And, and so we, our friendship, you know, we got different friends and all kind of got separated. We'd see each other from time to time. Well, I went to Bible college then and in my first ministry, and I learned they divorced. I was able to talk to both of them. And I wish I could say both of them responded to Jesus, but they didn't. But she did. And because of Jesus, her life will never be the same. And it was simply because I was salt and light. And what's cool about that story is that was a process that happened over, over like two decades. So there are people in your life that you've written off. Don't write them off. You're salt and light. You're salt and light. You're the love and grace. You're shining into the darkness. You're it. You're that person. And you need to pray, God, allow me to be that person and allow other people to come into their lives to be that person to be able to reflect the love of Jesus Christ. Don't ever give up on what God has created you to be. And what's so amazing with this story in Philippi was a church was started in Philippi, and a lot of people point to this single event where Paul and Silas let their light shine into the life of this Philippian jailer, and they started a church there that ended up changing the world. That's why we're called to be the salt and the light the salt of the earth, the light of the world. And, and there are times when you're going to be able to work behind the scenes. There's times when you're going to let your light shine very brightly. But don't forget your, who your born identity is in Jesus Christ. You are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Created, created to make a difference. Your life is very purposeful. He's created us on purpose with a purpose and for a purpose, each one of us. And we're all called to different areas. We're all called to different areas of impurity, different areas of darkness. But God has got you there because God's never wrong. So take the bowl off. Be the salt. Be who you were born to be in Christ. Would you pray with me? Every head bowed, every every eye closed. Father, we thank you for giving us so many descriptions of who we are in Christ, that we would rise above it, that it's not just positive thinking, but you have changed us. You live in us through your Holy Spirit, and you have given us a new birth, creating us as masterpieces, as ambassadors, as overcomers, to be salt and light. Father, let us let us grasp who you've created us to be. That we're not just reading stories 2,000 years old about Paul and Silas, but you're writing a new chapter. The chapter that you're writing about our life. May we not waste it to be trampled. Let us be who you created us to be. As you keep praying today with every head bowed, every eye closed, If you're thinking, you know, I do want to be the salt. I do want to be the light. I do want to be an influencer in this world. If if that's who you are, would you just see your show of hands, just if you would claim that today, that I want to be that. I want to be that. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Yes. Now, what I want you to think about is, just for a moment, are those people that you know 
who do not have the love of Jesus in their life. I want you to think about them right now. I want you to bring those. It could be uh, your boss. It could be a, a family member. It could be your, your spouse. I want you to be, be somebody that you rub shoulders with. Think about that person who you know doesn't have the power and the grace of God in their life. And, and I want God to bring those names to the forefront of your mind right now. And, and Father, I pray. I pray, Father, that you would use your children, that you would work miracles, that you would allow the conversations to happen, that, that these children of yours would be salt and light. Allow them the victory of that, to see the joy of that, not just to read about it in a story, but for their story. Father, I pray that you give them the strength to shine like never before. As we keep praying today, I know there's some of you who are probably going, you know what, I, I see it, I don't fully understand it, but I want it, I want it. I don't have it, I want it. Well, all you need to do to receive it, because you've been yearning for it, and if you're getting excited about this in your mind right now, it's because God's working in your life to fill that void that we're all searching for, that thing that we can hold on to. And, and, and we just need to yield to what God has already told us, that we can understand who Jesus is, that he did die on the cross, that he did give his life, that he shed his blood, that we might have newness of life to come from the darkness into the light. If that's you today, all you've got to do to, is to yield and say, Father, forgive me of my sins because there is a block. You may have tried to come to God before and you're like, I sense this barrier. There is a barrier. It's called sin. And we need to jump over that barrier through Jesus. And we ask him, Lord, show me, show me what to do with my life. And he will answer that question. And he will make you new. So, Father, thank you that you forgive sins. Thank you that you've created us to be salt and light. Thank you for loving us so much that we can rise above the darkness and the impurities in this world to be who you've called us to be. And Father, we thank you so much for that. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Um, just a couple things to remind you. If, if you have never received Jesus, we have a prayer team as you exit. If you would talk to one of those members and they'll lead you every step of the way. I told you about next week's going to be baptisms. Be prepared to that. It's, uh, be prepared for that if that's your next step. Um, the Belong class is getting ready to go on in just a minute. If you have kids, we'll, we'll go back there, and I'll show you what to do with those. Meet you upstairs for light lunch. Stand right now as we sing. Don't allow. One of the amazing things about worship is about how God can communicate to us through this corporate worship. Allow him to continue to speak into your life right now because you are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. i
morning, church. Let's just declare our faith here this morning as we sing together. And I believe in life eternal. I believe in the virgin birth. I believe in the saints communion and in your holy church. I believe in the resurrection when Jesus comes again. For I believe in the name of Jesus. salt and light wherever you may be and wherever you may go. We thank you for joining us this morning. Pray have a blessed week. See you back here next time.